On this episode of OBD for Everyone, we're going to explain and show everything you need to know about the Rear O2 sensor. Almost every gasoline fuel car made in the last 25 years will have at least two O2 sensors located in the exhaust system. One is located before the catalytic converter, and its main job is to provide feedback to the engine control unit on the exhaust gas concentration of oxygen. Then the ECU will adjust the air fuel mixture to maximize the catalytic converter's efficiency and minimize emissions. Now, the other O2 sensor is located after the catalytic converter, and this is the one we are going to be talking about. To make sure we all have the same understanding, there are multiple names for the rear O2 sensor. For example, downstream O2 sensor, postcat O2 sensor, and O2 sensor number two. All of these names simply tell us it's located after the catalytic converter. Okay, so far so good, but what does it do? Well, its sole purpose is to monitor how well the catalytic converter is working. Let me explain. The typical rear O2 sensor will output a different voltage for different air fuel mixtures, but only over a narrow range. If the air fuel mixture is greater than 14.7 to 1 or lean, the output voltage would be around 0.1 volts. If the air fuel mixture is less than 14.7 to 1 or rich, the output voltage will be around 0.9 volts. And if the air fuel ratio is 14.7 to 1, the output voltage will be close to 0.5 volts. This narrowband of sensitivity is why it's also known as a narrowband O2 sensor. Now, to determine how well the catalytic converter is working, the ECU measures just about everything it can from the rear O2 sensor. Like, how much time it takes to switch from rich to lean, how much time it takes to switch from lean to rich, the frequency of how often it switches, and there's more, but I think you get the idea. I'll bet you're wondering, why does the air-fuel mixture change so much? Shouldn't it be more stable? A few things come into play here. When we accelerate, the mixture will be rich. And when we lift off the gas pedal to slow down, the mixture will be lean. And when idling or driving at a constant speed, the ECU will change the air-fuel ratio back and forth between slightly rich and slightly lean, while it analyzes how the rear O2 sensor responds to these changes. A healthy catalytic converter has a high capacity to store oxygen. As a result of this, the rear O2 sensor should have a low switching frequency. If it has a high switching frequency, the catalytic converter's oxygen storage is low and is not functioning as it should. When the switching frequency becomes too low, the check engine light is turned on with a PO420 or a PO430, which means catalyst system efficiency below threshold. Now that we understand the theory of how the rear O2 sensor works, let's have a look at one in operation. An easy way to visually see what the rear O2 sensors are doing is to use a graphing feature of OBD Fusion. And towards the end of this video, I'll show you how to set it up. But right now, let's have a look. The red line is the bank 2 O2 sensor voltage. The green line is the bank 1 O2 sensor voltage. The purple line shows the vehicle speed. And the yellow line is the accelerator pedal position, which will give us a rough idea of the engine load. The first thing we're going to look at is a cold start with an outside temperature of about 5 degrees Celsius or 41 Fahrenheit. As you can see, the rear O2 sensors are almost a flat line just under 0.3 volts. This is typical for a cold O2 sensor. They need to be at an operating temperature of about 315 degrees Celsius or 600 degrees Fahrenheit for them to function properly. That's why they have their own heater to ensure they get warmed up as fast as possible. And as you can see, once fully warmed up, they will start to switch back and forth between lean and rich. Now, when driving at a constant speed, we can see them switching slowly, which is a sign of a good catalytic converter. If we lift off the gas pedal, we can see both banks go lean and we measure almost zero volts. And when we get back on the gas, they respond by going rich and we measure almost 0.9 volts. Now, with the car parked and the engine at idle, after about 15 to 20 seconds, we can see them switching from rich to lean and lean to rich. And for our final test, let's see what happens when I quickly rev the engine a few times. As expected, the O2 sensors quickly respond four times, once for each stab of the gas pedal. This is the proper response of a healthy catalytic converter and a good rear O2 sensor. Now, if you want to know how to set up this graph, I will show you that next. First, start your car, plug in your OBD scanner and connect to it either through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Start OBD Fusion, touch connect, 
If you have purchased the Enhanced Diagnostic Add-on, select Generic OBD2 and touch Connect. Now, touch Logs and make sure Graphs has been selected. Touch Menu, under Graph Item 1, touch Select, then SCA PIDs, then scroll down a little and select O2 Voltage Bank 1, Sensor 2. Touch Back and Back. And under Graph Item 2, touch Select, then SAE PIDs, then scroll down a little and select O2 Voltage Bank 2, Sensor 2. Touch Back and Back. If your engine only has one bank, the graph will always show this line at zero. If that happens, just disable it here. Under Graph Item 3, touch Select, then SAE PIDs, then scroll down and select Accelerator Pedal Position D. Now, if you don't have that PID, you can select Absolute Throttle Position and you should be good. Touch Back and Back. Under Graph Item 4, touch Select, then SAE PIDs, then scroll down a little and select Vehicle Speed. Touch Back and Back. At the very bottom, I like to make sure the time window is 30 seconds, which will show us the last 30 seconds of data on the graph. Make sure sampling is set to sync on PID frame. Turn off the legend so we don't cover up some of the graph, but turn on X and Y labels so we know what is what. And lastly, set Y axis position to offset. Touch back, and now simply touch play to graph the live data. All right, let's wrap up this episode. I hope you now have a better understanding of what the rear O2 sensors do and what their output should look like for different operating conditions. And since almost all rear O2 sensors are the narrow band type, everything shown in this video should apply to any gasoline fueled car made in the last 25 years. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe.